Hi, I'm Ross Edomite from RossTraining.com. It's been a while since I made one of these videos. One of the topics, though, that I've been meaning to discuss is that of confidence. Confidence is one of those intangible assets that we all know it's important. We all know it's significant. A confident athlete will typically outperform one who doubts himself. And you'll be hard-pressed to find anyone with half a clue who would dispute that simple fact. The question, therefore, isn't whether or not confidence is important. The question is how do we go about building confidence in our athletes? Because typically speaking, when you think about confidence as it relates to athletics and you look for examples, you are looking at individuals who are already extremely successful. Think about boxing, for example. Who are the most confident boxers? Probably the world champions. Individuals who have past success, past experience that they can draw upon. They've been there before. They know what it takes to win. They've proven themselves, which is great. It doesn't help the beginner or the novice, though, who lack that experience, who lack that success. And oftentimes, it's that beginner or novice who need confidence more than anyone. The problem is, though, that many coaches and trainers, they don't spend enough time trying to actively build confidence in those beginners. They think of confidence as somewhat of an afterthought. It's something that will come in time as that individual begins to win, gets a taste of success. And that's a mistake. Look, confidence, it's so important that it's worthy of your attention on day one. It's not something that you should wait on. You should actively be trying to build the confidence in your athletes each day. So what I'd like to do in this video is quickly share two simple ways that you can work to build confidence in your athletes. Okay, the first way we start to build an athlete's confidence is by giving him a realistic opportunity to perform well and succeed through training and practice. Now, as I say this, I'm not suggesting you don't push your athletes hard. My athletes will be the first to tell you, I push them hard, but amidst the push, amidst the challenges, I'm giving them a chance to perform well based on their ability. I want them to take something out of today's session where they can say, you know what, I did pretty well. So when they go home at night, they have something positive to think about. As opposed to going home shaking their head saying, oh my God, I suck, I can't do anything right. Because when a beginner starts thinking like that, day after day, you are killing their confidence. And these are individuals who already were lacking confidence. A lot of beginners, they're fragile. It's not difficult to break someone down mentally. So these hardcore trainers and coaches who are snapping pictures of athletes puking in buckets and laying on their back, bragging about how they wore this group out. Look, your job isn't to run guys into the ground. Your job as a coach or a trainer is to get the athlete to perform at a higher level. And that's a hell of a lot more difficult than it is to take someone and run them into the ground. It's not hard to get someone tired. You can do that with almost anything. Again, though, it's more difficult to take that athlete and build him up physically and mentally so ultimately he performs at a higher level. So give your athletes a chance to succeed in training and through practice. Because again, these guys, they don't have the experience that the seasoned veteran has. You need to give them experience through training, through practice. Give them something to feel good about. And when they do well, be the first to let them know, hey, nice job, good push today, you did well. Few words to you may seem insignificant, but those few words are often the difference in what that athlete goes home and thinks about. He's either shaking his head, wondering what's wrong with him, or he's going home saying, hey, coach pushed me, but I did pretty well. Can't wait to go back tomorrow. And that's what we're looking for. Challenge them, push them physically, while also building them mentally. As for examples, we can look back to boxing. It's a sport I'm involved in. Say I've got an amateur boxer, new to the sport. I'm not going to take that kid and throw him in the ring with some killer who's trying to take his head off on that beginner's first day of sparring. Getting that kid beat up in the gym isn't going to do anything to help his comments. I'm going to ruin him. What's going to make more sense is to take that beginner, teach him a basic skill set. Then when he's ready to spar, put him in with someone who knows how to work with him. So that beginner has a chance to practice 
some of the skills he learned. Maybe he'll land a couple shots. Maybe he'll defend a couple shots. When he's done, I want him leaving the ring. I want him challenged. I want him tired. But I want him to say, wow, hey, I did pretty well with this or that. I want him eager to come back the next day to do it again. As opposed to coming out beating up saying, oh my God, what am I doing here? That's not helping anybody. Again, build the athletes physically and build them mentally. And one way you do that is you give them a realistic chance to succeed in the gym, succeed in practice. Okay, another way we start to build confidence in an athlete is by getting him to believe that he can't be outworked. I want my guys thinking each day when they're training and when they get home. I want them thinking about a future opponent. Hold yourself accountable each day to questions such as who worked harder? Who worked smarter? Who made more sacrifices? Who wants it more? Think about that opponent, then think about yourself, and then try to answer those questions. You gotta be able to say, you know what, no one is going to outwork me. That's the mindset and the mentality I want all my athletes to share. I want each day to be a day where we win. If you've ever seen Eric Thomas on YouTube, he's got some videos where he talks about winning the day. I like to apply that mentality to training. Win today win tomorrow, the next day, and so forth. But don't just win for yourself. Win against the competition. Think about future opponents. Is he going out working today? Who's going to work hard? Think about it. When you start to truly believe that you're working harder today, tomorrow, the next day, when the time comes where you actually compete against that opponent, you're going to look at him and say, there's no way you worked as hard as I worked. That's the mentality and the mindset that you need to truly develop confidence. Think about it. Suppose you have a competition six weeks from now. You're not just competing in six weeks. When you show up six weeks from now, that's not the first competition. No, no. You've been competing each day. Your opponent might not know it, but you know it. Each day you're asking yourself, who wants it more? Who worked harder? Who made more sacrifices? You're thinking about all these ideas and you're thinking about that opponent when you're pushing through your last set. You're thinking about him. When you go home at night, you're thinking about him. Who's willing to give up more? And when you really start to honestly answer those questions and believe the answers, I outworked everybody, you start to become more confident. And if you need an example about that mentality, my favorite quote on this subject about confidence and hard work comes from Bernard Hopkins. Let me put that up on the screen for you real quick. Now that quote from Bernard came after he was asked by a reporter how he felt going into a world title fight years ago. And Bernard's response, in my opinion, is a classic. Like he said, I leave no room for doubt. He gave everything he had. There's nothing more to give. There is no doubt when you work as hard as you can possibly work. And that's a message that athletes of all levels can benefit from, beginners and advanced. You get yourself in the habit of giving your all, doing everything you can do to ensure that you succeed. That's how you ultimately develop confidence. That's how when you show up to compete, you sit there knowing you couldn't have done anything else. You're ready to go right now. That's a much better feeling than showing up to compete, second guessing your training, or wishing, I wish I had another week to get ready. You don't want to be second guessing yourself. You want to show up knowing I'm ready to go right now. Right now. I don't need another week. I want it right now. I did everything I could do. I couldn't feel better. I couldn't be better. I couldn't have worked harder. You couldn't have worked as hard as me. Because when you start to think that way and truly believe it, guess what? It's not going to just help your confidence. Your opponent's going to notice it. Confidence can be felt. You don't need to broadcast it. People are going to know when you truly start to believe in yourself. 
You're gonna hold your head up. You're gonna let everyone know I'm ready to go right now. And what happens a lot of time is now your opponent's gonna start second guessing himself. And that's a beautiful situation. So again, in summary, coaches, one, give your athletes a chance to succeed in practice and in training. And two, let them know, look, you're not just competing on game day or fight night, whatever the sport may be. You compete each day. Hold yourself accountable each day. Did you give everything you could give? Because when you truly do, you don't just develop yourself physically. Perhaps more importantly, you start to develop yourself mentally. So in closing, if you have any questions about this or anything else, as always, feel free to shoot me an email at ross at rosstraining.com.